This is GoPro Hero 9 with the Max Lens Mod. I gotta tell you why it's one of my favorite vlogging camera to use and the one feature that finally got me to upgrade from the Hero 7. And as a bonus, I'm gonna talk about one hidden feature that I saw very little discussion of. This week, I review the GoPro Hero 9 and tell you why you may or may not want to consider getting this camera. Are you ready to listen to me geek out on some camera gadgetries? Roll the intro. Always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and click on that bell icon to be notified of new episodes and stay till the end for a preview of what's coming up next. Photography and videography had been my other passion that I actually had spent not too much time talking about. But it actually has started way before I discovered electric unicycle. And it's part of the reason why I even started this vlog in the first place. And because of it, I have shot more than a thousand hour worth of footages on my little GoPro Hero 7. So I think I have a decent grasp on its strength and weaknesses as well as the idiosyncrasy of the GoPro cameras to do a review on its latest upgrade for 2020. When GoPro released the Hero 8 camera last year, I didn't really have much interest in it. So what is so different about the Hero 9? First, just so that we have a bit of a structure for this review, I'm going to split the video into three different parts. I'm going to start by talking about this feature that I think is meh that didn't quite factor into the buy decision for me. Then I'm gonna talk about those which I like to call good to have, which are features that I didn't mind having, but at the same time didn't convince me. And finally, what it is that actually broke the tie and the reason why I actually end up spending the money. But first, a quick intro about myself and my channel, just so that you can get some sense on whether or not you're even listening to the right guy in the first place. I ride and talk about electric unicycles, which is a very weird thing if you aren't familiar with them. All you need to know is that they are quite a bit faster than a regular unicycle, like 50 miles per hour faster. And so at a minimum, I'm looking for a camera that can deal with the hazards that come with that kind of speed. And the second thing is the kind of footages that I personally tend to gravitate towards. And at the risk of something like a self-obsessed narcissist, I tend to enjoy videos with me in it. <laughs> I love action sports and have been shooting with GoPros all the way back to the original GoPro Hero and the thing I realized after a while is that all the footages I have with the camera on my helmet pointing straight forward all look stupid generic and quite boring since I am not as fast are able to pull off as many crazy tricks as the professional sponsor beautiful people on YouTube. Instead, when I flip that camera around, I'm able to get footages that is much better at helping me remember that awesome trip I took years ago with some of my best friends. So by default, I always shoot with the camera on a stick, rarely body mounted. And why does that matter? It does because that's where the ultra wide framing you get with the super view comes into play. Because the wider your lens is, the less you'll have to worry about having to carry a really long selfie stick. Also helps that the GoPro is likely one of the most durable camera you can possibly get. If you have it mounted on the end of a very long stick, then the chance of you swinging it around and smacking into things is also a lot higher. Now, I also want to take a moment and talk about what the GoPro isn't for. As you may have noticed, this is not filmed with a GoPro. I usually record my talky bits with a DSLR, which in my case is a Canon M6 Mark II. Now, without getting to the specific of the magical DSLR tech, I would just say that the footage I get out of this camera just has that sense of intimacy, which I can't get out of a smaller sensor camera like the GoPro. The other thing GoPro is terrible at is low light. With its tiny sensor, your night footages is always going to look like a grainy mess. And 
I know that there are camera with a slightly larger sensor like the Insta 360R with a one inch mod. But based on my experience with the Sony RX0 Mark II, which has a similarly sized one inch sensor, I say that if you actually want usable footage at night, then a crop sensor DSLR is sort of the minimum of what you need. And that small GoPro sensor is also the reason why I wasn't particularly excited about the 5K resolution on the Hero 9. Yes, you get a bit more pixels, but since the actual dimensions of the sensor hasn't changed, the amount of light gather, which is far more important than resolution, is the same. Now I've heard that the upgraded higher resolution sensor supposedly also help with image stabilization, hence HyperSmooth 3.0. However, personally, actually didn't have too much issues with the performance of the image stabilization on my GoPro 7. So that particular upgrade did not really sway my purchasing decisions either. All right, so now that I've given you a whole bunch of reason on why I wasn't particularly excited about the GoPro Hero 9, I'm going to talk about some of the things that I would categorize as good to have. First, one of the headline feature of the Hero 9, the forward-facing screen. This was something I actually always thought I needed, especially after DJI included it in their own action cam. However, in practice, I rarely position the camera in a way where I can actually see that screen easily. It seems to be designed specifically for vlogging, but as I have mentioned earlier, the kind of flat everything focus footage that the GoPro Hero produces just really never did it for me. If I must vlog with something light and small, then more than likely I would go with my DJI Pocket, which is a great camera that I should totally do another review on. The other good to have feature is the higher video bitrate. Higher bit rates equal lower compression and better video quality. And the Hero 7 max out at 78 megabytes per second while the Hero 8 and 9 max out at 100. Is it a huge difference? Not really, but well, it's good to have. Finally, the larger battery. Personally, if you ask me, I'd just say that if you need more battery life, buy more batteries is your solution. They are removable after all, and based on experience, degrades pretty quickly with frequent use. The batteries on my Hero 7 only retains about half of their original runtime after about a year. So I always carry at least two spares wherever I go, especially when it's cold out, since they take an additional hit when the temperature is low. So bigger batteries? Well, it's good to have. And finally, we get to the reason that actually tipped the scale for me. Did way more than that, because as soon as I heard about this particular feature, I was just like, that's it, I'm getting the Hero 9. But to explain my thinking, I like to first talk about framing. Now, in my humble opinion, there are two components to a great photograph, and they are camera position, i.e. framing, and timing. There were this famous photo from the great Robert Kappa taken during the D-Day landing. The photograph itself was grainy and blurry. But the thing that made it one of the most iconic photographs of the 20th century, it was precisely because of where and when it was taken. The reasons why movies look well cinematic is that the framing of imagery is meticulously planned out on storyboards and used as a means to convey subtle messages about the subject and storyline. Now as a low-grade YouTube peon, by no means do I claim to be any sort of great cinematographer. However, I had settled on a few shots that I regularly like to use and the GoPro 9 provides me with the means of consistently producing those shots. And the secret of making my footages more exciting? Well, lower your cameras. With the ground rushing by, it dramatically increases the sense of speed and immediacy. And also, since the subject of my video are the electric unicycles, the lower angle also highlights the more exciting part of the subject instead of the meaty, yappy bits higher up that nobody cares about. And I do mean low. I actually try to get the camera as close to the crowd as possible. And since one of my favorite shots is the chase cam view with the camera actually behind me, so I also have to do this blind. 
For the longest time, I used a mechanical gimbal to help keep the camera level, and I still prefer the look. However, I also smacked the gimbal on various things so many times that it'll now look like this. So it's back to digital stabilization, except that I hated the shifting of the horizon line in my footages. And that is why when GoPro announced the addition of horizon leveling built into the camera itself, I was just like, take my money now! However, despite my initial excitement, I did remember the fact that a good digital stabilization also requires a substantial crop, which somewhat negate the advantage of having that super wide angle on the GoPro Heroes. And it is true, if you want to utilize horizon leveling, then you're limited to the much narrower linear view. But that is where this comes in, the Max Lens Mod. Pop this on and it'll let you both enable 360 degree horizon leveling and give you back that wide open view. By the way, there is also this one sort of hidden feature I haven't heard too much discussion about, which is that you can actually enable 360 degree horizon leveling even without the lens. And when you do, you are still handicapped by the limitation on resolution to 2.7K. In those instances where a narrower field of view is acceptable, then it's actually a really good feature to utilize and I found myself actually reaching for it on several occasions. Now this one feature may not seem like much at first, but based on my experience, it is incredibly difficult to keep the camera level. After all, with an action cam, you usually are shooting something that would require your full attention, like trying to navigate this crazy New York City traffic. But with the GoPro 7, I often end up with decently stabilized, but incredibly skewed footages that I can't really use for my videos. And let me tell you, there is just nothing more frustrating than having gone on an incredibly fun and exciting ride only for you to come back and realize that all the fun footages that you have captured were not usable because your camera was cranked the wrong way. Furthermore, with the 360 degree leveling, it also allows you to pivot the camera around the stick to enable different angles, which is awesome and something I'm still experimenting with. There is one downside I want to make sure that I mention, which is that when you're shooting with the Max Lens Mod mode enabled, you are capped at 2.7K. And since you're also utilizing a smaller portion of the sensor itself, so it's not just a reduction in resolution, but also in details. By the way, you can shoot in 4K linear with the 45 degree horizon leveling with the Max Lens Mod, and it works about 99% of the time, but occasionally you do get this. It's workable. However, at least for me, it was a trade-off I'm more than happy to make given the additional assurances with usable footages. As a camera nerd, the best kind of purchases are those that open up additional possibilities and inspire you to go out and shoot in more conditions that you never would have otherwise. And the more I play with the Hero 9, the more it feels like it is that and much more. Glory reached the town. Oh man, look at the time. I somehow managed to waste another 15 minutes of your life, but I hope you enjoyed it. This is the first, but by no means the last of my gear videos. And if you enjoyed it, please let me know in the comment section below. Like and subscribe the video and hit that bell icon to be notified whenever a new video drops. And shout out to my supporter on Patreon. Please check out the link in the video description if you enjoy and like to support my work. And as always, as much as we all love it, Electric unicycle, the only way for us to get better wheels is to grow as a community. So tell your friends, teach them how to ride, and get them hooked. Until the next video, thank you. Next episode, it is the end of 2020, and it's time to crown the electric unicycle of the year. <laughs>